Hello there, thank you for joining me. This is part two of my HGV learning series. Today I am doing a revision for the theory test. This is so entertaining, it's unbelievable. The book that they have given me is huge. This is the official book that you will need to practice your theory test. It is over 500 pages long and it is full of stuff that you will need to learn. It is jam packed. The annoying thing is a lot of the questions are the same, but just asked differently. And that can really be annoying, especially when you're tired and you're trying to get through it as fast as you can because you really need to do your theory test before you can progress any further. My license has finally come back. They said it would take seven to 10 days, but it's actually took more than two weeks. But it's come back and it's, it's exactly the same as it was. There's no change to the back of it, to the front of it. So I contacted, I think it was the DVLA I contacted. I asked them about it and they said, it's fine, that's how it should be. It's just online where it changes. So now if I do phone up and register for the theory test, it will say that I have sent my license off and now I'm ready to do the theory test. And then I can progress on to doing the assessment, which I was unsure whether I'd be able to do the assessment before I've done my theory test, but it turns out that I'm not. So let's get into some learning. You're driving the lorry in a busy town, a driver pulls out in front of you and you have to brake hard. What should you do? What are you doing? Are you stupid or what? You idiot! Stay calm and accept the arrow. Your lorry is fitted with a driver's seatbelt. When may you drive without worrying it? When you're making deliveries that are less than 50 metres apart. You're driving along the motorway and see this sign. What does it mean? High-sided vehicles can be affected by side wind. On which type of road is this more likely? Open roads. Where would you anticipate problems when you're driving a high-sided vehicle on a windy day? On high-level roads. Which vehicle is least likely to be affected by high wind? How on. You're driving at night. Why should you ensure that all your lights are clean and working correctly so that other road users can see the size of your vehicle? You're overtaking another lorry. What should you do if you start to lose speed due to an uphill gradient? Um, ease off and drop behind the vehicle you were trying to overtake. Which of these is an unsafe place to park your vehicle or trailer? At an overnight service area, near the brow of a hill, in the yard, at a factory, in a lay-by in a built-up area. In a lay-by in a built-up area. Near the brow of a hill. Never do your driving for a wagon. <laughs> How is drinking alcohol likely to affect your driving? If there's anybody out there that is thinking of doing the theory test and they want to have a look through the book, if you can't find it online or you don't want to buy it, I can scan through it with the camera. So you can have a look, I can go through every single page if that's something you would like. And then you can go through it in your own pace, in your own time. I'll put the contents in the description and you can go through the book at your own pace and have a look at a couple of questions. Maybe you just need to practice one part, one section, like vehicle weights and dimensions, for example. I was hoping to be able to revise quite a lot more than what I have done, but I had to revise for another test which come up because I found out my health, safety and environment had run out. So I needed that for work, so I had to revise for that. So I needed to do that. It's another 250 page monster, but I managed to pass that.
So now I've got to concentrate fully on the theory test. I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think it's going to be as easy as people make out because there's a lot of information to take in. Some of it's quite complicated if you've never drove wagons before or you've never been around wagons before. The uh lines or the emergency lines or auxiliary lines or whatever you want to call them can be quite confusing. The stopping distances are completely different as they are in a car as you would expect. The weights and dimensions, the stickers, the plaques that need to be on the front of the vehicle, the back of the vehicle, it can all be very confusing and the test itself is 100 questions and you have to get 85 correct out of those 100 questions to pass plus you have an hazard perception which is what you do on your normal standard driving test anyway. I did enjoy doing the first video. This is the first video I've ever done. It's the first time I've ever spoken to a camera. I did find it quite strange and I'm finding this very strange as well. But I did decide that it's something I want to do. It's something to, I enjoy doing. So I'm going to start vlogging more. So I have bought proper equipment to vlog with. I'm just waiting for a GoPro microphone adapter to arrive, which I've had to order from America because they're sold out absolutely everywhere. That's why the audio is a little bit up and down and all over the place. But I will have a proper microphone soon, hopefully by the end of the week. I hope you've all had a fantastic bank holiday weekend. This was just a little bit of a test, really. I've not really got any content to give at the moment, but it's just a bit of a test to make sure my setup's working, make sure that I know how to edit, that Premiere Pro's working correctly that I'm working correctly. The next thing I will be uploading will be the theory test itself. I'm not gonna be able to take the camera into the test center, but I will go through what I've had to do, what I've had to take part in, uh, what the questions were actually like, were they easy, were they difficult? What the hazard perception was like, was that easy, was it difficult? And ultimately whether I've passed or failed. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you come back. I'm not gonna tell you to subscribe and click like and share and all that rubbish. Everyone's been using YouTube for a long time now. If you want to subscribe, I'm pretty sure you will do. If you dislike the video, I'm pretty sure you'll give me a thumbs down and call me an ugly get. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye. What does this motorway sign mean? What should you do after overtaking on a dual carriageway? What should you do? What does it indicate? You're driving. What should you do? What should you do? Why is it dangerous? You're, you're on a motorway. You're driving. What should you do? What should you do? What should you do? What should you do? <laughs>